This is 21st Century Reformation at 21stcr.org. The seventh chapter and verse one, Mm -hmm. for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham as he was returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, Mm -hmm. to whom also Abraham apportioned a tenth part of all the spoils, was first of all, by the translation of his name, king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, which is king of peace, Mm -hmm. without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, he remains a priest perpetually. Yes. Wow. So what is he, uh, he yeah. now we're going to talk about Melchizedek. Yes. He's mentioned him a, right. a time or two before. Right. Now we're actually going to discuss okay. this fellow this Melchizedek. Fellow. Like and people get caught in verse 3. They say he's without mother, without father, without genius. It's got to be God. <laughs> yes. I'm afraid this is a case where the Hebrew background, a little learning, is not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Because Philo, a famous Jewish writer mm-hmm. of the same century as we're reading here, said that Sarah had no mother and father. Mm-hmm. This is a way of saying we don't have the genealogical, the genealogical record records. Yes. But unless that's explained, I mean, who's yep. going to know that? Sure. So that's where commentary is most important. Mm-hmm. And after all, Jesus did have a mother. <laughs> so it isn't Jesus, yes, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> didn't have a mother and father, mm-hmm. meaning, and we're going to see that later, he does trace his ancestry to someone, as all human beings do, but we don't know who that is. We that's don't know who it is. is. And, uh, uh, and the importance of the uh, genealogy is ex- exceptional when we're talking about those who are priests. Of course. Because their office as priest Depends is predicated on upon of their being born that's right. in the proper that's family right. lineage and so on. That's, yeah. right. uh, that's so interesting. You can see uh, how one can get caught uh, in one's ignorance. And oh, say, well, sure. this has got to be Jesus because yeah. he had no mother. Well, wait a minute, he did have a mother, that's Jesus, the Son of God, had a mother. Yeah. And this is a priest, and obviously has a genealogy. We're going to see that actually later. Mm-hmm. But we don't know where it's from. This yeah. is key, because he's sure. not an Aaronite. Yeah. He's not a Levite. Right. Well, who is he? That's we'll this whole point. See. So we have this fellow who shows up, mm-hmm. as it were, yes. in yes. the narrative, yes. in the storyline, yes. in uh, Genesis, yes. uh, the 14th chapter, yes. and probably beginning about verse 18. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it's so interesting, because it's like he sort of, we don't know about his genealogy, right. we don't know where right. he was from, and yet he is called a priest yes. of God. Of the high school. And, uh, and king of yes. Salem, the uh, city yes. of uh, Salem, uh, perhaps uh, yes. related to uh, Jerusalem, I don't yes. know. But, uh, yes. but anyway, uh, he was uh, a priest of the Most High God who met Abraham yes. as he was returning mm-hmm. from the slaughter of the kings. And this he blessed Abraham then. Uh, that's a wonderful Fascinating, thing. Fascinating, isn't yeah. it? I, it? strikes me as you read that. That's interesting. He's a king as well as a priest. Wow, ah, yes. Ah, that's yeah. very nice. That'll fit for Jesus and the church, right? Yes. We're kings and priests in training. Excellent. Jesus is a king priest. Yes. I hadn't taken that in fully. Not just a priest, but he's Excellent. a royal figure. Yes, that's he's right. very important. That's right. How, how, uh, how good then. Mm. Well, so he was all of these things. He met Abraham. He blesses Abraham. Mm. Uh, and Abraham did something interesting. Abraham paid him a tenth, <laughs> mm-hmm. as it were, of the spoils from uh, war this spoils. war he had been in. Indeed. And uh, uh, which was a sign of honor mm-hmm. that Abraham mm-hmm. is giving to yes. this fellow Melchizedek, showing that he respected Melchizedek yes. as a priest yes. and uh, honored him as such. Yes. So this guy wasn't a pretender or something. He was a real priest of God, yes. but not according to... The Aaronic priesthood, exactly. which wasn't even going to show up for hundreds of years later. That's right. Uh, isn't that interesting? And we just emphasize the fact that his being without genealogy simply suggests that, more than suggests, it tells us that we don't have a record of it. But yes. not that he didn't have a genealogy, yeah. which would make him God. That, uh, you know, yeah, that, <laughs> lift him out of the human And, and you've race. had folks who have left, that, yes. left to that oh, yes. conclusion. Yes. Melchizedek then must have been God, yes. which is... It's, really it's quite amazing. If you know a little bit about the Jewish ways of speaking, and right. it is important to recognize it. Then you wouldn't jump to that yeah, conclusion. You wouldn't jump at all. to that conclusion. Yeah. And by the way, if Melchizedek had been God, then I would think this writer would have said, hey, you know Melchizedek? Yes. He was God. <laughs> you know, he doesn't say that here, for no, goodness no. sake. He's, he's right. looking at the life of this 
otherwise rather unknown character yes. Yes. and finding some parallels that he's going to draw from yes. by way of analogy or, yes. uh, with the situation with Jesus. And parallels, uh, right. there's going to be some parallels, right. not exact parallels not exact. as such, no. uh, but some parallels that are important nonetheless, mm-hmm. I think. Okay. That's right. That, verse 6 is perhaps mentioning in advance of where you are mm-hmm. that his genealogy is not traced from them. Melchizedek's mm. genealogy is not traced from Levi, right? but it's traced from somewhere. It's traced from somewhere, but we don't know where. We, we don't have that's, a record of his father right. and his mom, and we don't know who they were. Exactly. Right. So, but very important. Very important. Verse 4. Now observe how great this man was to mm. whom Abraham, the patriarch, mm. gave a tenth of the choicest spoils. Mm-hmm. And uh, he says in verse 5, And those indeed of the sons of Levi... Mm-hmm who receive the priest's office have commandment in the law to collect a tenth from the people, Mm -hmm. that is, from their brethren, although these are descended from Abraham. Mm -hmm. So later on, we have something said about a tithe to be paid to those who were descended from Levi for their role and the things that they did from the brethren. So the brethren paid this out of respect and honor to Levi, I suppose. Verse 6, but the one whose genealogy Mm -hmm. is not traced from them Mm -hmm. collected a tenth from Abraham Mm -hmm. and blessed the one who had the promises. Mm -hmm. So this fellow, Melchizedek, was a priest of God, respected and honored as a priest of God, even by Abraham. And yet his genealogy doesn't come according to Moses, the law, Levi, the Aaronic priesthood. It's not part and parcel right. of that. Isn't that interesting? That's very interesting. So Abraham and Melchizedek are somehow senior and more uh, important yes. than Levi. Now this is shocking, right? Because yes. Levi was rather important. Of course. But now we're moving to another idea. There's oh, a higher priest. Another whole level of this matter. Than the whole Levitical thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But the one whose genealogy is not traced from them, mm-hmm. not from Aaron, not mm-hmm. from Levi, mm-hmm. collected a tenth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Collected a tenth... Uh, uh, from Abraham, so isn't this interesting? And, and served in the function of priest with yes, Abraham. Yes. Verse 7. But without any dispute, the lesser is blessed yes. by the greater. That's Abraham is blessed by, by the greater. By the greater who was Melchizedek. Yes. At least in this circumstance, mm-hmm. in this situation mm-hmm. at that time, mm-hmm. uh, Melchizedek had a greater station mm-hmm. than Abraham mm-hmm. had, according to this writer. And, that, and I think that's true. Mm-hmm. So, he, uh, he goes on to say in verse 8, In this case, mortal men receive tithes. Mm. Now he's talking about l- those who are descended from Levi yes, and Aaron exactly. again. Mm. Mortal men mm-hmm. uh, receive tithes. Mm-hmm. But in that case, one receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives on. Well, well, his day. Yeah. He lives on. Why? Because there's no record of his death. We don't have a, so, no. yeah. so, so he's fitting the type. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's fitting this uh, typology. Right. He's speaking typologically. Right. Yes, of exactly. course. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and that, by the way, that, that typology, I think, would be easily understood by his readers. Yes. Uh, people who are familiar with these That's things, right. of course. Right. Okay. Verse 9, mm-hmm. and so to speak, mm-hmm. through Abraham, even Levi, who received tithes, paid tithes. Mm-hmm. So you've got to realize, this is very uh, metaphorical, yes. it's very yes. uh, colorful. Yes. Uh, but he's he's taking the circumstances with this man, and That's he right. was a man, right. uh, Melchizedek, right. and he's sort of designing a nice uh, story for yes. us that helps us to understand yes. Jesus as high priest. That's right. Yeah. And Levi, of course, was, was a descendant of Abraham, yeah. which makes him less than Abraham. Yeah. He's less significant. Less Abraham sig- is more significant. And Melchizedek it's is interesting that Levi mm-hmm. in... Abraham mm-hmm. in a figure yes, in a figure speech. and all of this is figurative right. but in a figure he is paying tithes to yes. uh, Melchizedek right. isn't that interesting it's very clever it's yeah. rather subtle though, yeah it is it's all of this is in the good commentaries yeah. by the way oh, right. it's we're it's not inventing good. anything of new course. here but it, yeah. it takes some pondering and thinking about um, yeah. I think it's so interesting too uh, sometimes people uh, get into this passage mm-hmm. and then think well, this is a passage teaching us about tithes. Yes, Not yes, really. You're yes, missing yes, the point. Yes. The tithe in these cases, uh, that uh, was the tithing that was going on, mm-hmm. uh, uh, is not his real lesson. Not his so lesson much. about is about who is a priest yes. and who is the greater in the priestly yes. roles. Yes. And 
the fact that the uh, those who were of the Aaronic priesthood mm -hmm. of Aaron mm -hmm. were figuratively paying yeah. tithes yes. in the person of Abraham, Abraham. to yeah. Melchizedek oh, yeah. showed that Melchizedek was even a greater priest yes. than they were, yeah. greater than Aaron yeah. himself. Take That's amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. Yeah. Yes. It's a beautiful picture he's painting. Yes. It's a lovely, lovely thing. The verse 10, I think, explains that. Exactly as you said that, he was still in the loins. Yes, verse 10, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. So it's, it's a beautiful figurative yes. language. So we shouldn't get too lost in the, in the figurativeness, no. No. but realize the lesson he's teaching us is all about how it is that Jesus can yes. be a high priest yes. when he is not of ah. descendancy yes. from yes. Aaron. He's not from descendancy of Levi. Yes. Uh, he was from a different tribe than Levi. And that's exactly. what it's going to tell us. So the he then, verse 10, he, Levi, was still in the loins of his father, mm -hmm. yeah. being the descendant of Abraham. That's fascinating. Right. The, the key there is, is helpful that he's mentioned as a king there. Mm. I hadn't thought of that before. So that's we very good. Today. Today. Yeah. Well, I like that. We're moving to kingship now, mm -hmm. as well as priesthood. Mm -hmm. That suggests Jesus mm -hmm. very strongly. Yeah. So we have uh, under... Uh, under the Mosaic system, mm -hmm. uh, kingship and uh, the role of the priesthood yes. were, were really divided right. issues, very separate. Right. The, the king was not the priest, the priest That's was right. not the king. Uh, this but case. this fellow, yes. Melchizedek, yes. interestingly, was yes. king over a city, yes. a place called Salem, yes. and also served right. as a priest of God. Right. He had both those roles. Yes. Now we're beginning to see Jesus. That's right. Uh, this, this prefigures yes. for yes. us. Jesus, who will be king and priest. There's also a uh, Jewish tradition that David had priestly functions. Yes, yes. So he's a type too. Yeah, he's, surely in that not sense. A Levite, that's right. But he's doing priestly things. Right. That's fascinating. Excellent. Exactly yeah. as a type of Jesus who right. does priestly and Indeed. royal things. Indeed. Verse 11. Now, if perfection was through the Levitical mm -hmm. priesthood, mm -hmm. for on the basis of it the people received the law, so the whole law was hanging on the basis, I yes. think, do, would you say? of the Levitical priesthood. Take it out, there is that's no law. Right. Okay. And Moses himself is a Levite, is he not? Yes, indeed he is. So that's that right. whole law thing now mm -hmm. is being replaced in some subtle way with something greater yeah. than Moses, yeah. greater than yeah. Levi. Yeah. And, and in fact, if uh, what our writer is wanting us to get out of this mm -hmm. from the word go is yes. that Jesus has, has come, yes. he is both king and priest yes. of God. Yes. And the whole program now is a program in uh, of perfection, yes. which was not achieved, could not be achieved yes. under the uh, mosaic system. It's very it. radical because Moses was the ultimate, you know, yes. in Jewish thinking. But so now we're being told there's something, there's something better, better, something greater. Than Moses yes, and yes. Levi. My yes. goodness, that's pretty exciting. Wow. Continuing on in eleven, mm -hmm. uh, he says, "What further need was there mm -hmm. for another priest to arise?" Mm -hmm. If perfection was through the yes. the Levitical system, right. then wrong. what need was there for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek mm -hmm. and not be designated according to the order of Aaron? Wow. wow. I see. I mean, Why would you ever change it if, right. if that was That's the good. ultimate? If it was it what we really, really needed uh, for perfection, yes. then why would you ever change it? Yes. But again, it seems to me that this writer is saying the whole law is hanging mm -hmm. Uh, is, is functionally uh, engaged yes. with this Levitical priesthood. No doubt. Yeah. So everything's at no stake doubt. in this one issue. Yes. Yeah. But yet it wasn't bringing perfection, so there's going to be something different. Yeah, yeah I like that. Right. And this priest, this another priest, arises. Mm. That's nothing to do with coming from heaven, from a pre-existing yeah. life. He shows up on the scene mm. of history. That's what arises means. Yes. And that's the descendant of Judah, yeah, indeed. the Messiah. And he is indeed from among the brethren. That, uh, that Excellent point. Right. The prophet must be from yeah, among right. the brothers of Israel, like yeah, Moses, that's right. but superior to Moses. And as we've seen in the fifth chapter of this writer, uh, priests are chosen from among yes. the brethren as well. And that's, that's, exactly. Uh, that's that's so, yeah. How disruptive then is the idea of the incarnation with a capital I? Oh my I. goodness. Oh my. It shifts the story into the sort of fog of antiquity and the past and you lose yeah. the whole reality of history. Yeah. Yeah. That there's a real man being born in Israel, that prophet, mm -hmm. who replaces Moses in fact. Right. Mm. So verse 12 then, mm -hmm. for when the priesthood is changed, right. now he's not talking about 
adding a new priesthood. Mm -hmm. He said a priesthood being changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. For when the priesthood is changed yes. of necessity, mm -hmm. there also takes place a change of law also. That's staggering. Oh, my goodness. Torah. Yes. The word is Torah. Oh, see, my lands, yes. You can't change. The, for a Jew, the change of Torah is anathema. Yes. Can, impossible. Impossible. A yeah. change of Torah? That's yeah. radical yeah. stuff. But yet, that is exactly what the writer of Hebrews is telling us. Yes. Had to happen. It had to happen. It had to happen. Exactly. Oh, so, Jesus is saying, uh, not one jot nor tittle yeah. will pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I think if we're going to, uh, uh, to believe this writer... Yeah. Yes, the fulfillment has come upon us in the in the person yes, of Jesus exactly. Christ, and a change is involved. And a change when you're going to change the priesthood, yes. uh, and that's what he's saying yeah. happened. It's not that we added another priesthood; mm -hmm. we changed right. the priesthood yes. effectively yes. with God. Now you could go on doing whatever you wanted to yes. as uh, as priests and all that in this world, yes. uh, and I suppose some did back there. Yes. That that doesn't cut it with God anymore. Yes. God is now has changed right. the priesthood. And the change necessitates, requires a change in, in the law. In Torah, and, absolutely. Uh, and that is fundamentally important because we get the text in Matthew 5, 17. The key there is he came to fulfill it. Otherwise, we've got sheer contradiction. Yes. This man is talking about a change of Torah. Jesus says, not a jot or tittle. Yeah. But Paul then intervenes to tell us it's in the spirit, the yes. law now. That's the fundamental difference that we yes. must get over to yeah. people. The letter of the law is gone mm, yes. in important areas, but it's still there in spirit. Mm -hmm. We already in this book learned about the Sabbatism. We've, yes. we've moved from a weekly seventh day rest, which is under Moses, to a Sabbatism, which is a rest from our own works and a rest that's anticipated for the future. So the key is the spiritualization of the law. This will harmonize Jesus with Paul and with this writer. Yeah. And, uh, and then the... Uh the objective, the, the point of all that the law was pointing to, yes. all that the law was trying to tell us, yes. we find it now right. in Jesus Christ, yes. not by, the, by way of trying to maintain the law itself, That's right. but we find all that the law was about, all it was trying to tell us, we yes. find it all, all in, Christ. in Jesus yes. and perfected yes. in him everything that, that we needed. I think it's so important, Dan, because people will latch onto this idea that you can't change the law. Jesus said it, not a jot or tittle. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's think about that a moment. Then every Gentile must be circumcised physically. Yes. So there, there is not only the change in a priesthood. Yeah. It wasn't just a, an incidental issue. Not so. When you change that priesthood, right. you've got to change the law. That's right. Isn't that interesting? And well, I think the stark way to put that point to people is this, that Jesus clearly said, we're not changing any laws, mm. but we are fulfilling them. So yeah. what does this mean? Well, the classic case is the issue of circumcision for yes. males. Yes, yes. It is patently obvious that in Genesis 17, you had to be circumcised physically as a male mm -hmm. to become part of the covenant, Jew and Gentile. So is Paul a great false prophet? Yes, some of these people are saying Paul was a great liar. Oh, my lands, yes. <laughs> but if you believe Paul to be a true prophet and, and an apostle, yeah. then clearly the law has been changed. It's yes. been spiritualized. Circumcision yes. is not physically right. uh, the important thing, but it's, it's of true. the heart. True. That's a great key to how we relate the Old Testament Torah to the New Testament Torah. Wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. I love it. Verse 13, For the one concerning whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe, from which no one has officiated at the altar. <laughs> For it is evident that our Lord was descended from Judah, a tribe with reference to which Moses spoke nothing concerning priests. Fascinating. Yeah, wow. Significant. He's just someone, this is his point he's been getting to, isn't yes. it? Yes. From the word go, yes. he starts out talking about for this Melchizedek. Yes. What has that got to do with yes. anything? Actually, it has a lot to do with everything, doesn't it? Absolutely. His point, uh, the writer's point, is summed up in verse 14 to this, yeah. to this uh, point. Yeah. And he's saying, Jesus Christ is a priest, folks. Yes. I can picture people objecting and saying, no, he, he's That's not right. a priest. He's not our priest. You're, yeah. you're, you're kidding, because the priests right. all have to be from the lineage yes. Uh, yes. of uh, Levi yes. and uh, Aaron specifically yes. Yes. and Jesus is not from Levi so he's not a priest right. well it's like the writer of Hebrews is sort of uh, uh, trumping all of that isn't he yes. he's coming back and he's saying oh well let me tell you something God can have a priest yes. outside of Levi yes. if he wants to do it 
And he did do it on one occasion. Yes. Let me show you an example. There was this fellow back there, Melchizedek was his name, and he was back there and he incidentally met yes. Abraham yes. Uh, and uh, he was uh, called uh, both a king, uh, king of Salem, and he, this fellow, was a priest of God, recognized as a priest of God. Abraham recognized him as a priest of God. Yeah. That's awfully good credentials. Oh, that? Yes. <laughs> so, so now... What is going on is God has chosen this man to be priest, and we don't have any mom and dad lineage about no, the guy. No. You know, we have nothing about him. Yes, we don't know anything about him yes. uh, other than that he was a man, yes. and he lived back at that time, yes. and God chose him to be king and priest. So uh, that shows us then, mm -hmm. uh, it shows our uh, the Jewish folks, it shows everyone out of the Bible itself, yes. God, because he's God, yes. he can do this, he can choose a man to be king and priest, priest, high priest. Mm -hmm. He can do it if he mm -hmm. wants. Doesn't have to be bound by the matter That's over right. there about Levi. The Levi thing didn't work out so well anyway because yeah. they kept dying. He's going to tell us. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and so now we have uh, Jesus being chosen mm -hmm. as high priest mm -hmm. by God, and this is the perfection that that was not. But being as we've made a change in the priesthood now. We also have a, a, a necessary change, change in the law, sure. and uh, so it's it's Very all radical. all of it has shifted now. That's right. Jesus is now what it's all about, and he was yeah. a descendant of Judah. I love that. I like. That I, I just want to mention this interesting point. Seven fourteen is rather extraordinary because in Isaiah seven fourteen, you have the virgin will conceive. Oh yes, yes, yes. And in Second Samuel seven fourteen, okay, yes. you have I will be the father of the Messiah. God yes, speaking. There. Yes, yes. And here it's evident that the Messiah is descended <laughs> from Judah. I don't know if that's a coincidence. That's, it's remarkable. Well, whatever the case, it's fun. lovely and it's, it's beautiful. Wonderful. I love, love that, yeah. yeah. So Jesus was not from, he was not qualified according to the law to be a that's priest, right. but by using mm -hmm. uh, Melchizedek as his type, as his example, mm -hmm. He shows God can choose one to be a priest yeah. if he so chooses, and God has. And uh, so, uh, so we have a change in the priesthood, <laughs> mm. flat out, yes. and also it necessitates a change yes. in the law. This is radical uh, stuff. It is. You know, the order. Jews got uh, troubled by this because they eventually said there must be uh, uh, two messiahs. Mm. One from David and one from Levi. I see. They couldn't put it together. But we know <laughs> okay. how the story developed. That's right. It's one person, yeah. one Messiah. Well, uh, and this wonderful writer of Hebrews mm. is is just clar clarifying all of oh, that yes. in one fell swoop yes. by this example drawn from uh, this yeah. uh, rather uh, non right. ex <laughs> not not very well known passage out of Genesis. Because he he rises out of the thing. fog from nowhere. Yeah, where right. he's from. But he's king. I love that. He's king and a priest. It's lovely. And Abraham's paying tithes to him. I love so it. So did Levi, right. so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that rich? Yeah. So it was, and, and of course, uh, again, uh, this passage is not yeah. about tithing or right. paying tithes. No, no. It's all about what the tithe represented in that situation. That's right. It represented someone honoring someone yeah. else and showing them to be the greater. So the greater priesthood was not Aaron's. Mm -hmm. The greater priesthood was Melchizedek's. Thankful, Isn't that amazing? And ultimately Jesus. And now Jesus is a priest. Right. He's not Melchizedek, but he's a priest, yeah. like Melchizedek like was. God chose him yes. to do this. A king priest. That's yes. exactly. wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, this is a, a strong evangelical, evangelistic mm. plea to you Jews. Listen carefully. Yes. The Messiah has come. Yeah. That's what makes the difference between a Christian and a Jew, that we believe the Messiah yeah. has come. Wow. You better get the idea that he is the Messiah. He's already at the right hand of the Father. He's the one now, yeah. not Moses. Yes, yes. He's the one that you are indebted yeah. to. Wonderful. You know, and it's, there's a stunning wisdom in all of this. I can put myself back there in the place yes. of uh, a Jewish person mm -hmm. who was reading this mm -hmm. writing or listening to this mm -hmm. uh, being spoken, and it would just be, I think, stunning to them to realize, radical. wow, this isn't just a wild idea or something. That's God right. really did yes. make this man, mm -hmm. Melchizedek, a priest and a king priest at that. That's amazing. And so what this writer in Hebrews is saying yes. is very plausible then. Yes. Jesus Christ yes. could be made king yes. and priest yes. by God. We're talking about the constitution of the universe here. Yeah. Isn't that fascinating? This yeah. is the way the universe is actually constituted yes. now. Yes, yes. Radical. The Messiah has come and died and gone to the right hand of the Father. Are you going to believe that or not? Yes. This is yes. the new story, isn't it? Yes. Very, very right. significant. I love it. It's, it's wonderful. Yes.